I hope everyone's doing well today. I am Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for this problem with regards to parametric equations. And what is it that we are looking at? A representation x and y axis in origin. We have a small circle here with the radius b. We have a larger circle with the radius a. We have a specific radius developing here. You know it's equal to the radius of the large circle, so it's a. But offset from it by means of a right triangle is a certain point p. As this rotation occurs, this point P traces a curve and a resulting shape. What is that shape? We have to determine it. We have to determine the parametric equation of this point, which represent the X and the Y value of that point P. How can we do it? Think about everything like this. When we are tracing this point P, it's not located on a radius and that you would get a concentric circle. You by no means would trace a circle. It's located basically off the radius by means of a triangle, right triangle. Here's my point P. As this angle changes, rotation occurs, the dimensions of this right triangle will change and it by no means will trace a circle, but it will trace something. What is that something? That's what we're going to determine and we will. So how do we get started? We have to determine the X and the Y values of this point P and we can. Look at this representation and bring it down and develop a right triangle and pluck it out. I'm looking at a right triangle. Here's the point right over here on the circle, but my point P is located right over here. I'm looking at this point P and then X and Y. If I develop it across, I have this right triangle as you see it, and then I have a certain angle theta. Now think about it, nothing here is drawn to scale. But if you look at this dimension right over here, and this dimension is equal to this dimension, and it's equal to the radius of the small circle, because the small circle is coming like this. If you look at this dimension from here all the way here, you're looking at the radius of the large circle because it's going like that so it's exactly it's not too hard by any means from here to here i have a b but from here to here i have an a that's what i have think about everything like this in the following way and it'll make it easy you see this point right over here extend it down and make a right triangle if i can determine from here to here a certain y dimension it will correspond to the y dimension of point p and we would be good if I can determine from here to here a certain x dimension, it would correspond, translate to this x dimension of that point P, which is exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to look here at the small triangle and we'll focus on that. When I focus on it, I have a certain angle theta, I have a certain hypotenuse B, and I have a certain Y I'm looking at. Sine theta is equal to Y over B. Y here is equal to B sine theta, and that's your first parametric equation derived for that, and it wasn't hard. Now let's do the x. When I'm looking at the x, I'm looking at the large triangle, and I will look at it. Here's a certain dimension x, here's my origin, here's a point on the outer circle. We'll just call this point r. Here's my point r, and it would correspond to that point r. If I can determine the x dimension over here, it'll translate to the x point of this point p, which I'm looking at. And how can I do it? I have a certain angle theta, I have a certain hypotenuse a. Cosine theta is equal to x over a, x here is equal to a cosine theta, and here's my next parametric equation, x is equal to a cosine theta, and the two parametric equations are developed, and it wasn't too hard. Now what we have to do is eliminate these parameters and determine what the curve is, and trace that curve, point P, and see what that curve is, or the shape that would develop, and you will actually enjoy it. We've certainly made it clear that it's not a circle, it's something other than a circle. How can we do it? Push the constants on the other side. I have y over b is equal to sine theta. You can do this by multiple ways, eliminating the parameter. I'm doing it the easiest way. And this is it. Think about this identity. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals 1. So square everything over here. Otherwise, you can use the inverse trigonometric route. That's another way. Look over here. I have here y square over b square is equal to sine square theta. I have here x square over a square is equal to cosine square theta. If sine square and cosine square equals 1, then what they equal to should also equal to 1 by means of a sum. y square over b square plus x square over a square is equal to 1. And what do you think this looks like if I write it like this? x square over a square plus y square over b square equals 1. I've just twisted these around or flipped them around, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. What does this look like to you? It looks like a horizontally directed ellipse. That's what it is. That's exactly what this depiction represents. When you trace this curve, you're going to get a horizontally directed ellipse. And I'll show you why. Anyhow, our parametric equations are these. For the point P, the X is A cosine theta. For that point P, the Y is B sine theta. When you eliminate the parameter, you end up here at a horizontally directed ellipse. A equation or a formula for a conic section. Now let's trace that point P. Here's my point P. Here's a certain angle theta. As you take this angle down right here, this point will trace out here. This right here is A. 
you know the outer circle has a radius A, the inner circle has a radius B. It will trace from right here. As you take this angle and you start making it long, this thing will trace and it will come up to right over here. And then as you go past the 90 degree mark, it will trace outward. And then as you go past the 180 degree mark, it will trace in this direction. If you erase all these extraneous lines, what you end up seeing here is an ellipse develop. You have a a comma zero. You'll have here a minus a comma zero. At this point, you'll have a zero comma b, and here you'll have a zero comma minus b. By means of these dimensions, you're seeing b being the radius of the small circle, a being the radius of the large circle. That's exactly what it is. An ellipse traces parametric equations, the equation I've already given you, horizontally directed ellipse, and that brings our question to an end. Just remember. When you trace this point P, because it's not located on the radius line, it's located away from the radius line, you're not tracing a circle, but you're tracing an ellipse. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.